a red filament style vehicular LED lamp and it's matching little cute box. This I thought was just going to be something very ordinary. I thought this was going to be straightforward resistors or something like that. But it turns out there's a little chip in here and I can zoom down to a degree but there is a limit because this is tiny. I shall, I shall hold it up to the camera and I shall try and focus on that and take the exposure off a bit. That's going to brighten it up. And inside you can see a little chip here called an EMS1117. And I thought, that's reasonable enough. It's going to be a little current regulator. No, it's a voltage regulator. There's a bridge rectifier for polarity uh, correction and a little 22 ohm resistor. I'm thinking it's time to get this circuit board out and take a look at the circuitry because I think this is a voltage regulator being used as a uh, current regulator. Let's take a closer look at it. Well, uh, let's find out if we can get this out, first of all. Is it a solvent-based glue? Is it hot melt glue? Let's squirt some isopropanol on it. It's out. That's what we want. Right, time to explore further. One moment, please. And resume. Oh, this uh, this caught me out in two ways. I noticed that one of the filaments here was a bit... Uh, let me just zoom down this. It was a bit dimmer in the middle. It was almost like there was one LED missing. It wasn't. It turns out that one of these filaments has 10 LEDs in it. And the other one has two sections of 8 LEDs. And so the voltage drop across one of these is about 5 volts. And the other one is about 3 volts. It makes up a total of about 8 volts across these filaments. Um, it also means that theoretically one side is twice as bright as the other. I didn't really notice that. Notice the thin shim of phosphor in the back. That's purely because some of the blue light from the chips that stimulate the phosphor will be coming through. And it's just to avoid that blue tint. They just put a wee smear of the phosphor in the back just to convert that into a slightly orangey red glow too. The current regulation, well let's start at the very beginning. The supply comes in and it goes to this bridge rectifier. And then you could either supply AC or DC. If it's AC, all the diodes are back. If it's DC, then it will just steer it to the appropriate terminal and uh, only two diodes will be used. Then there's one, and this caught me out. Uh, this is a 22 ohm resistor, 2 2, and a decimal multiplier of zero. So just 22 ohms. That is in series the whole lot. It's just to take some of the dissipation away from this regulator, also maybe to limit the inrush current while it's stabilizing. Uh, but I thought that was a sense resistor. It turns out this dinky little resistor down here is a sense resistor because this is an AMS1117, which is available in 1.2 volt, 1.8 volt, 3.3 uh, volt and 5 volt, plus probably some others. But you can also get the adjustable version, which is a voltage threshold on, it for, on its sense pin of 1.25 volt. So what it's doing here is it's actually measuring that across this 150 ohm resistor. Now notice this resistor is marked 18X. That's just a industry standard designation. And they could have written 150 and it would have been 15 ohm. Unfortunately, 18X is a secret code. You have to look it up for that standard. It's just used for some of these resistors. It would have been easier just to print it on. That's strange how they do that. Um, and that is more or less all the circuitry covered. Right, tell you what, I'll bring in the schematic and explain it all. Here's the schematic. So here's the incoming supply. It can be quite a wide voltage range because it is current regulated. It goes through a bridge rectifier which will drop roughly 1.5 volts. It, the current in this circuitry was, uh, what was the current in this circuitry? 82 milliamps. 82 milliamps, which is the same all the way around the whole circuit. The first level of current limiting is this 22 ohm resistor in the negative rail. The current goes from the positive through the LEDs. It goes through that double section LED package, one of the filaments with two times eight LEDs in it, in parallel, and then it goes through the filament with just 10 on one side. Uh, so that gives a voltage of about eight volts across that. It then goes to the regulator, and uh, that's where it actually measures the voltage across this resistor. This regulator is quite versatile. It's primarily designed as a voltage regulator, where you'd normally you'd have a divider going to the zero volt rail 
and going to the input of this, and it would basically, whatever voltage you set it for, when, say you wanted 12 volts out of this, you'd set the voltage divider so it put roughly 1.25 volts here uh, at the point it reached the correct output voltage. But in the case of a current regulator, which we're using here, it simply has a resistor, and the current flowing through the resistor causes a potential difference of 1.25 volts across that resistor. And when it senses that across the resistor, then it starts going up in resistance. It regulates the current. It limits it. And in this case, well, I measured 1.24 volts across that. To get that, let me bring in the kink calculator. I equals V, the voltage dropped, 1.24 in this instance, divided by the 15 ohms gives you your 82 milliamps. Uh, yes, that is right. Likewise, I got caught out. I saw this resistor. I thought they'd used a 1.8 volt regulator because, by sheer coincidence, um, the V equals I R. So the current was 0 0.082 times that resistance, which was 22 ohms, equals 1.8 volts. So I thought they had used a 1.8 volt regulator initially and just used as a current regulator, but no, it is there at the one with the 1.25 volt threshold. And that's it. Looks simple. Well, it's quite tricky to reverse engineer just because the tiny little circuit board and also probing things that are on both sides, it's always hard holding the probe in place when you're doing that. But that is it. So summary, the current flows gets rectified, goes through the LEDs, goes through this linear regulator, which does, it will then automatically adjust, no matter what the voltage is within a reason, it will limit the current to that 82 milliamps. And then there's just this resistor here, which is probably just really to take a bit of the heat dissipation away from the regulator. And that is it. Very clever, very neat. A lot more in the lamp than I was expecting. It's quite smart. I shall bring in the picture, because it's quite a nice picture. It's very colourful, just because, well... I had to use lots of colours to decipher that. But interesting little thing, it's uh, ceramic filaments as well, with the LEDs on them, and the nice case. And the fact that, that uh, it's got the bridge rectifier on it is good because many of these lamps that go into that sort of uh, friction fit socket that you can put the lamp in either way around, uh, they are polarised, so you have to try the lamp in one way, and if it doesn't work, you take it out and put it another way. This one, because they've gone for a lower voltage, it's slightly less efficient. Uh, but it just means you can put the lamp in either way and it will work first time. So that's quite good. It's quite a neat little lamp.